we are recording. So thanks for coming, guys. Um, for those of you that were at our training on uh, Friday and Saturday, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you for putting up with the terrible weather. Um, up next, we have snow on our list. I'm hoping for our next training we'll get some snow because then we'll have the whole gambit. You know, we got terrible rain. We had hail. We've had smoke before. Just need snow now. And then, then we'll start going into like disasters like tornadoes and stuff. So, <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Um, and we're going to go start by going over the, the BAT website. Um, that's kind of where you can do everything that's BAT related. Um, and then we'll go into any questions you guys might have and maybe some other resources too. So let me get that screen sharing going. All right, can everyone see my screen and my mouse and everything? Mm. Or this? Should be a Google tab? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to start off with is um, the BAT website. Um, I have a tab for it, um, but basically the URL is washingtontu.org slash bat slash. Um, and this is our website here. Um, you also see if you just go to the Washington Council of Trout Unlimited website, which is right here, the BAT team, we have our little drop down here and you can just click on the word bat and it'll take you here. Um, as you scroll down, we have some helpful resources. Um, first is uh, right here. Um, when we do private properties, we start by sending out a postcard to the pro private property owner. Um, and this is a great spot. This takes them to a private property landowner page. It has a bunch of FAQs and things like that um, for people who are interested in utilizing us to do a survey on their property. We also have a little shortcut to submit submitting your forms that you filled out in the field, but you can also find that further down. And at any point, if you guys have questions, just let me know. I'm going to cover everything on the website, though. So as you keep going down, um, the big part that you guys need to pay attention to is this set of tabs right here. Um, the first one is our training videos. I try to post most of our training videos here. Um, we do have a YouTube, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, but this is kind of where you, you'll find the most relevant one. So this is a training video that Luke Kelly did for us right here. It's the first one. It's kind of our official training video. The next, next one is going to be WDFW's training video for level A. I think it's pretty good, but it's only like 11 minutes long, but it does show you stuff actually out in the field. So it might be a good way to kind of um, remember the specifics when you're actually out in the field instead of the stuff that's in the manual, I guess you could say. <laughs> kind of tell you how to actually do it. Um, as we go down, this is a great training. I know Erin uh, mentioned it when she was going over it during the during your guys' training on Friday. This is the Fish Use Potential and Significant Reach training. Um, it's a 45-minute long presentation that Luke Kelly did, and it really goes into specifics on how you can determine whether or not a stream is has fish use potential um, and whether it's a significant reach. Um, I think that's one of the con most confusing things that we have to do in our program. Um, and this will really help you kind of figure out, all right, is this biological? Is it mapped? Um, or any other thing, basically. Um, it goes into how you determine um, scoured widths, et cetera. So that's a great training to watch. Um, you guys can ignore this marking site as resurveyed right for now. We're uh, kind of working on that. Submitting data, though, um, this is a good one to watch. This is a great example of how you submit your data to us. I'm going to walk you through it today anyway, but if you ever forget, I made a handy-dandy how-to video, so that way, um, if you do forget anything, we're good to go. And you guys can always email me, email me if you have questions. The next one is finding culverts to survey. Um, at the beginning of our program, uh, we weren't getting a lot of requests, so we had to um, 
basically find culverts to survey. Um, and this tells you how to use the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife map, which I'm going to show you tonight. Um, so if after tonight you forget how to um, find a culvert to survey um, or to find a specific culvert, um, you can go watch this video. This one is the turning point how-to video. Um, for those of you that weren't in my group, um, I don't know if Aaron talked about it, but when you get really, really um, big road fill depths, we're talking like 20 to 40 meters where your stadia rod won't reach to the road surface and get that the beep with your laser level. Um, you actually have to bring your laser level down the hill and you basically have to kind of do like a leapfrog up the hill and then back down the hill. Um, and that's called a turning point. Um, and this is a video that I made with uh, my buddy Xavier and Scott um, Goddard, who's one of our volunteers. Um, and that kind of goes over the basics of it. Um, there's a very detailed and mathematical instructions on how to do that in the, uh, the WDFW BAT manual. Um, I'm always here to help with it. I'm not the best with it yet. I'm still kind of learning because for me, sometimes math like that is difficult, but I'm always here to help. The next one is how to reserve a bat kit. We're going to go over that too, but if you forget, we've got a video for that. Um, so those are all the videos we have. Um, we're going to go up here. Next one's training slides. Um, the only training slides we have posted is going to be the ones that Luke presented on the, um, the, like the in-depth look on doing uh, pot potential fish use. Um, WDFW doesn't like us posting the training slides publicly, so... Um, if you do need access to those, just shoot me an email. Um, I can send them to you so you can review. We just ask that you don't share it with anyone um, because they do. Um, they are property of WDFW, and they're very nice by letting us do these trainings and um, provide the information and whatnot. So um, we just kind of want to keep it secret because we don't want other people to, that aren't associated with WDFW to start training people um, when they don't have permission to. Our next tab is gonna be our training resources. Um, I try to put whatever I think is relevant here. Um, there's always more relevant information, but um, we have a bat master guidance that I've been building over time. Um, it kind of has step-by-step -step processes on how to get your kit, how to go out into the field. It's a Google doc, so you can go in there and I add to it as I find stuff. Um, it tells you how to go do surveys, how to find culverts. Um, one really nice thing that it does is it tells you how to label um, photos. So I'll, I'll click on it real quick. And um, this is what it looks like. You know, it says in development because we're still, we're learning as we go here. Um, the first one is kind of just how you can start going out and doing surveys. You know, it starts out by doing the bat training. Um, there's also some FAQs down at the bottom of it. Um, this is kind of a step-by-step -step on how to do a field survey. Uh, but a great one is, let's see. Here, this one right here. How do I file slash label my photos when submitting the survey forms online? This is probably the thing that you're gonna reference this document the most with. Um, your first photo is gonna be of your outlet and you would name put your site ID number there, underscore one. Your inlet would be side ID underscore two, and then any additional photos, usually habitat photos, are gonna be side ID number underscore three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As many as you get, try to not do more than eight photos, because um, that's a little overkill, but you know, if you need two or three extra habitat photos, that's fine. Um, and then there's just some relevant links and stuff, which I have throughout the website as well. Let me go back. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, these mapping, this ma mapping guidance, I'll go over once we go over the WDFW maps, um, but these are how you can determine whether or not there's fish um, or fish use potential. Um, great tools to have. I'm still kind of exploring them a little bit. And here's a great place to get forms. If you guys are out of forms in your kit and you need to print some more out, I have them all here. Um, you have the actual form and then the instructions that go on the back side. Um, and then you can just print them out and take them into the field with you. Uh, we have a list of the items that should be in the bat kit. Um, so if you end up getting a bat kit 
and you become one of our back kit owners, so you're responsible for it. It's great to keep that inventory because when you check it out, you need to make sure you have all the items, and when it gets checked back in with you, you need to make sure all the items are there. And that's a cool picture of a culvert. I think it was up in Greenwater probably. Assessment forms. Okay, so we're going to go over how to submit data. Um, so you're on this assessment form tab. And you're just going to skip all this fun stuff here and go straight to the view and complete forms button right here. So I click that. It's going to open up a new tab for you. And you're going to scroll down and um, within the form, we have five separate sections and you got to do each one one at a time. You can't skip them. Um, and we're just going to start off and I'll walk you through each each step here. Um, so I'm going to I auto fill it just to make it easier so I don't have to type it all but um, you have your crew lead name, so that's the person that's actually entering the data. Um, you want to decide that once you get to your sites. Um, a lot of the times that's going to be your scribe. Um, so first and last name, the best contact info, so email and phone number. Um, I will call you. Um, every um, form that gets submitted to me, I do quality assurance and quality control on. Um, for example, I had two submitted to me this or last night and I had to call the person that submitted them um, to verify a couple things um, because there were some discrepancies with the last time that culvert was surveyed and we want to make sure we're submitting good quality data to WDFW. So then you hit the carry on. Um, alternatively, if you need to take a break, you know, maybe we'll start working on it tomorrow, you would hit save and continue later um, and it would ask you to put your email in um, and it would email you a link to continue doc the document at a later time. Um, that link's only good for 30 days. Um, please, um, after you submit, uh, co complete a survey, please try and get your stuff submitted within a week um, because I send the stuff to WDFW and we want to show them that we're actually getting stuff done. Um, plus, that'll be more fresh in your head um, so you don't forget things if I have questions for you. So I'm going to hit carry on. The next thing is going to be our site ID. Um, if you already have a site ID, you would put it in. So I'm going to put a random site ID in here. Um, if you don't have a site ID, though, you would have to stop here and you'd have to contact me and say, hey, we don't have a site ID for the site. It's an unregistered site, um, which I'll show you where to find site IDs in a little bit. Um, but if for some reason you were like, hey, there's no site ID, you email me and I'll give you a site ID. It's an, we have a list of unregistered site IDs that I can give you. And then congrats, you found a new culvert that hasn't been surveyed before, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's one of the big things that we're trying to do with our program is find the ones that haven't been done yet. WDFW doesn't have enough staff to be able to find all those. So our identifying group, it's going to be, um, you can put TU or you can put Trout Unlimited. Latitude and longitude, um, you would fill out whatever you got in the field. Um, again, I'm just putting random things in here that are somewhat right. And you would put as many digits as you got while you're in the field. Normally, it's about six significant digits. Road name, um, put the road name, okay. mile post. If you have a mile post, you throw that in there. County, we'll say king. Um, some of these things are required. You'll see by the little green asterisk. Some of them aren't. Um, the RIA number, um, water resource inventory area, um, that is something that you do need to include. It can be found on previous surveys, but there's also a RIA map, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, usually, if you're in the King County area, it's either going to be RIA 7 or RIA 8. Um, and sometimes previous surveys will be even more specific. It'll be like RIA 8.016. Stream name, pretty easy. There, sometimes there is a stream name, sometimes there isn't. Or I'm going to say it's Laughing Jacobs, tributary to Lake Sammamish. So it can be a water body that it's a tributary to, or it can be a, uh, a river. Um, Sammamish. I'm probably, I, I know I spelled it wrong, but it's okay. This isn't a real survey. <laughs> Sammamish is hard to spell. Um, directions, try to be specific with them. Um, it really comes in handy when you're on like a long forest service road. Um, if you can say one mile past the 7003 
turn off. 7003 being the Forest Service Road. Past the Forest Service Road. 7003 turn off. That's great. It's great help. And then you can just set your odometer when you go there in the future. All of your feature types are going to be culverts. We're never going to be doing a non-culvert crossing. So that's a bridge normally. We're not going to be doing dams or any of this stuff. So it's, you should always be selecting culvert. Um, if you're not selecting culvert, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> um, fish use potential, we'll say yes for this one. Um, and we'll say it was biological. We saw a fish there or a previous survey did. And we'll just pick some random fish species. Um, these are going to either be found in our map, our fish use maps, or it's going to be found on a previous survey. And site comments, we're going to put anything that's relevant. Again, remember, we're not putting long stories. I don't want any novels because I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to make that small down to like two, two or three sentences. Um, it should be short and sweet. Um, you don't even necessarily need to say. There was a bunch of brush or anything like that you can just say um you know steep access um it's just it's it's known that there's going to be blackberries at a lot of these sites so you can just say um steep access and that's it or um large uh, or we can say drainage ditch for road upstream something like that and then we can say uh let's see water surface drop 10 meters upstream measuring one meter it's a big water surface drop so we carry on we're on to our owner information um, if you're in my group remember you don't really need to put anything unless it's private property the only thing you do have to do is put the type um, you're going to do state county or city most of the time so we'll say county, and then I usually put what county it is. So I'll say King County. And I skip all this stuff normally, unless it's a private property, which is a different story and a whole nother monster that we'll tackle later. Hit carry on. And now we're on to our level A culvert assessment form. So we just did the site ID form, and now we're on to level A. So we're going to put that same site ID dumber. I know it's not the same as what I did earlier, but imagine it is. Crew name, we're going to put our last name. So I'll put Eulatia. And we'll just say Steve was out with, out with me. So I'll say Eulatia Miller. That way, if I call the crew lead and he doesn't answer, I can call one of his uh, the people that was helping him and see what happened. Total volunteer hours. This is something that we don't submit to WDFW, but it is how we um, keep track of how, many, how often our volunteers are going out. And we have to submit this every year to the council. Um, so we're including the time that it took all your, all the volunteers in your group to, from the time they left their house to the time they got home. Um, and you can add it all up. So we'll say Steve and I did this one culvert. It took us each an hour to get there and an hour to get back. So there's four hours total. And then we took us an hour to do to the survey. So we'll say five hours. Culvert number, we'll say there was only one. So we'll say 1.1. Um, if we had two culverts, we would be submitting another form. And on the next form that we submitted, it would be this. If this was 1.2, the next one would be 2.2. But for this one, we're just going to say 1.1. We'll throw our date in there saying we went today. Now, this is something new that we added. Um, it's if we did a full assessment or a site description only. Um, so site description only would be on a on a culvert that is non-fish bearing or does not have fish use potential. We're getting this a lot with our culverts that are um, up on the Forest Service roads where, you know, one out of 10 of the culverts we might actually do a level A on, but the other nine we're only doing a site description on, um, just that first form. So if I hit that, that gets rid of all the level A form data that we need to submit. We would carry on and all we would have to do is submit um, photos basically. But for this one, we're going to say we did a full level A. You're going to pick your uh, culvert material, your span, your rise, your water depth. Um, again, you'll see um, that it says what you should be going to. So width of culvert to nearest 0 0.01 meter. You guys do not need to put whether or not this was in meters or um, you don't need to put like one meter in here. 
That just makes my data sheet look messy and I end up having to go to de delete it all. You don't even need to put one M, just put what the number is. I already know it's being submitted in meters. Um, and it makes it easier for WDFW to input the data into their database. They actually have to copy and paste every single cell from an Excel sheet into their database for this. They don't have a way to like um, make it automatically uploaded. So the easier we can make it for them, the better. Um, for shape, we would pick our shape, water surface drop. Um, that would be our total drop at whatever the greatest drop spot is. So um, remember from our training, if you put your largest drop in this box and then any other drops you have, you're gonna put down in the comment section. So we'll say we had a water drop of 0.25 meters. We'll say the uh, drop location was at the outlet. And then again, if there were any other water surface drops that would go down in the next comments box. Apron, we'll say there's no apron and that our total length was, let's say 23.5. Culvert slope, we'll say it was a 2% two, two culvert slope. Um, you don't need to put the percent number. Um, you just put two. If it was, uh, you know, a really small percent, you could put 0.15. Um, so, but no need to put the percent number. Road fill depth, we'll, go, we'll say a three meter road fill depth and a 3% slope. Countersunk, we'll say no. Backwatered, no. Okay, and we'll just say yes for all these guys to get through things quicker. Bank full width, um, remember the bank full width is gonna be the average. Um, ideally, we wanna take three upstream and three downstream, add them together and then average it all. Um, if you only can only do it on the upstream side, that's totally fine. We just want to kind of get a representative average of the entire stream the best we can. So we'll say our bank full width was four. And we'll say our span bank full width was 0.15, the ratio. And not tidally influenced. Um, so pool length, um, if you don't have a pool, you would just put zero. So for this one, we're going to say there's no pool. Um, if there... Um, you can put zero or not applicable. I, I don't, either, either or is fine. Um, but if there is a pool, please put the correct numbers in. And then finally, the barrier status. So yes, if based off that flow chart that we went through, you would put yes for b there being a barrier, no for there not being a barrier, or unknown if your flow chart tells you to go to level B. So we'll say unknown, it asks us to go to level B. So whenever you hit that unknown, you automatically, automatically for passability are gonna be hitting that unknown box. Um, that's one of the mistakes I get a lot is um, we might have a weird slope and people will still put unknown level B required, but they'll put like a slope, um, a slope option also instead of unknown. Um, we just want unknown. Let's see, significant reach, we'll say yeah, it was an important one. On our comments, again, short and sweet, um, I'm gonna say water surface drop upstream 0.26 meters. Or we'll say water stream upstream. Yeah, something like that. Just short and sweet, again, it can be kind of abbreviated just as long as whoever's reading it understands it. Um, and again, remember, this is all public public record, so someone, some, anyone could read it. We're gonna carry on, this is our last screen here. Um, if you were to do a level B, this is where you would upload your data and it would be uploaded as an Excel document. Um, we didn't train you guys in level B, so there's no need to worry about it. But this is where you upload your photos also. So to upload your photos, you can drag and drop them into here, or you can select files. Uh, I'm gonna upload this random map that I have on my screen to show you what it looks like. Um, so it would say final JPEG or whatever you upload it as. Um, the X just means if you want to delete the photo. It doesn't mean that there was an issue uploading it. It just means you can delete it if need be. And again, as I showed you guys earlier on our resources tab, there's a specific naming nomenclature that we want you to use for the photos. Um, it makes it a lot easier for the WDFW assessors to be able to re figure out like, all right, this is the inlet, this is the outlet especially if it's a dry culvert with no water running through it, really hard to tell what way the water runs in a dry culvert. So having it n named appropriately is super important. Finally, you're gonna hit, I'm not a robot. 
and submit. Um, you'll receive a this confirmation, and then you'll also receive an email saying, hey, we received your submission, thank you. Um, I will also receive an email saying it, and then I'll go in and edit it. If there's any issues, I'll reach out to you. With that, are there any questions in regards to submitting a level A form? Nick, was there a, well, you did the uh, the channel width part, there was a um, backup. Could you scroll back up to that part on the level A form? Uh, I will try. I might have to start a new form. Oh, uh, well, the, the question was, I think, I think there was just uh, one spot for width, but I remember we were measuring the width upstream and the width downstream. Yep. So for the bank full widths, we only want the average. Um, we don't, we don't need all of them. So, um, you're going to average your upstream and downstreams together. Oh, that's so right. Okay. You just add them okay. all up, take the average. Um, you, you know, usually you're going to get five or six and then you would put that in for the bank full width there. Okay. Um, and then if you guys, you guys will notice there's no scour width measurement except for in the pool. So remember you're only collecting scour width if there is a pool and you're collecting the scour width just of that pool. Any other questions for submitting forms? Perfect. If there is, you can always just email me. All right, we're gonna keep going down this uh, bar here and then we'll get into some maps in a second. So the next thing is gonna be reserving kits. Um, I have this map here kind of dividing up our areas. Uh, this is ideally what we where we want our bat kits to be eventually. Um, we might divide it at the Pierce County line and have like a central Puget Sound and then a South Sound region. But right now we have three kits in King County, one kit in the Olympic Peninsula in Kitsap, and then one kit in Cleallum. Eventually we're going to get a kit up in Bellingham, a kit in Spokane, and then another kit somewhere down south. We're not sure yet. And then we'll have probably three in King County. So... Once you hit that reserve kits button, you're gonna go down here. Um, we have a little uh, calendar, calendar here that I'll update if we start getting ridiculously busy with um, surveys. I don't think we'll get to that point yet. So you're gonna hit the kit reservation form button here. And it's just gonna take you to another form and I'll show you the map again. You're gonna scroll down here and enter your information. Um, so again, I auto filled it full name, email, phone number, and then this is where you choose what kit location you're going to check your kit out from. Um, so right now, you know, we have a kit in Sammamish, we have a kit in Seattle, um, I guess Ellensburg, not Cleelum, Edmonds, and then Kitsap Peninsula. You can pick whichever one's closest to you or whichever one's closest to the area that you want to do your surveys. So I'm going to pick the, uh, I'm going to pick the Seattle one. Um, that's Carl's kit, I believe. Um, and then you're going to pick the, the first date kit requested. So the date that you want to check the kit out on. So I'll pick out Friday. And the date you want to return it. So I'll say next Thursday. Try and keep it no, no longer than a week. Um, unless you're doing a huge amount of surveys and you're doing, going out and surveying every day. Um, we want to get it returned that way your um, the bat kit owner can make sure it's in good condition the batteries are re, uh, replaced and that the next person can check it out and then finally you're just going to hit the i agree to the waiver um, all that says is that um, you're only going to use the kits for for bat related business please don't take your rangefinder to the golf course to see how far you can hit the ball um, and that You'll always have a partner when you're surveying. You can't do it by yourself. As you guys saw from the training, it's pretty darn hard to do it by yourself. Um, and especially if you're in a culvert like that deep one. Um, and then if any items are damaged, lost, or need to be replaced, you, you're going to let your kit owner, the person you check the kit out from, know as soon as possible. Uh, if you lose something or something gets damaged, that's okay. It happens. Um, we have replacements of things. Um, and it's not really a big deal if the little things get lost. If one of the bigger things gets damaged or lost or broken, um, we'll talk about it, but um, we, we have backups. So 
Last thing you do is just do your little signature, doo -doo -doo, and then hit I'm not a robot and submit. You'll get a confirmation. That email is going to get sent to me saying that you want to check a kit out, and it's also going to get sent to the back kit um, owner. So Carl will be receiving an email probably like within the next 10 seconds saying, hey, this person wants to check out a kit. Um, and they will reach out to you to figure out where you guys can meet, um, who's going to pick it up, etc., return dates, and the whole works. Um, and they'll kind of take over from there just to make sure that you guys are good as golden on that. Any questions in regards to checking out a bat kit? Well, it's, it's really not not a question. More of if you if you replace the batteries, you know, let the person know so that the spare batteries can be restocked, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. If if well, you, it's pretty minor, but it's not a comment. Yeah, if you use the batteries and take them out of the 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 bag, just let let your kid owner know that you used them and that more needs to go in there. Um, the kid owners replace everything and um, they get reimbursed by us for that. So, okay. Next on the list is the barrier map. This is going to be your best friend and sometimes your worst nightmare. Um, there are two maps that we use um, and we're slowly phasing out one of them and just kind of primarily using one. So there's the WDFW map and there's also the Trout Unlimited map. Um, we're kind of phasing out the Trout Unlimited one because um, it doesn't always get updated from WDFW. Um, it takes a lot of data management to make that work. So, And I find that the WDFW map works much more smoothly. So if you want to access the WDFW map, you can hit this button here, launch WDFW map full screen, or... You can go to your browser, and I just type WDFW Fish Passage Map, and it's going to be the geodata services.wdfw link right here. Just making sure everyone can see the map, right, or see the screen. Can you guys all see this? Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, this is the WDFW fish passage map. Um, all these blue dots are culverts that have been assessed before. Um, so there are anywhere between probably about 13 and 20,000 culverts in the state that have not been assessed that we think are, exist. Uh, we don't even know if they exist. We just think that they exist. It's an estimate. Um, so these are the ones that have been assessed. Um, and we're going to zoom in on an area. And as you zoom in further, you start seeing all of these little colors. The greens are normally culverts that are passable. The yellows are culverts that have a partial passability rating. So, you know, 67 or 33% passability. And the reds are barriers to fish passage. Um, the grays um, sometimes are... Um, natural barriers like a waterfall or they can also be things sometimes like a, a non-culvert crossing such as a bridge so let's go and we'll go down into lake sammamish area and we'll look at laughing jacobs creek because we just surveyed these they haven't been updated yet in the database but um, this is a great place to get an example um, so well, first I'll say, if you have a specific culvert you're looking for, you would enter it into the find addresses or place. So I'm just going to copy and paste this real quick and zoom out. So that way you guys can see how it works. So I have this culvert here, 920058. When I hit enter in the search bar, it's going to zoom me in and take me right there. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually put GPS coordinates in. So I could put this coordinate, comma, that, the longitude, and then hit enter, and boom, it takes me right to that spot. It doesn't take me to the specific culvert, but it takes me to that area, and then you can see if there is a culvert there or not. Um, so if 
I got a request from the Forest Service and they sent me a GPS coordinate saying, hey, there's a culvert here. I want you to survey it. I would send out those coordinates to you guys and you guys would go onto the WDFW map, enter those coordinates and see if there was a culvert there or not. Um, if there was one, you would write down that site ID and you'd go out into the field kind of with that data in mind so you had an idea of what you're looking for. If there wasn't a culvert there, you guys are going to go in blind um, and just assume there's a culvert there. You'll get an unregistered culvert number from me and go from there. So looking at this culvert, uh, let's, let's look at the one I was looking at beforehand. We'll just go with this one. Uh, no, that, those are a little more confusing. Here we go. Okay, so I'll, there's a little difference here. The green dots, and then there's green dots with blue around them. The blue, the blue around it indicates that it's a barrier correction, meaning that um, it's been restored. So a lot of the times, your original culvert will be a just a culvert, um, and then once it's been restored, they'll usually put in like some type of bridge um, with a really wide um, span. That way your bank pool width is within that span. And then that's how we determine it's a bridge. So looking at just a normal culvert, the information you can get is the site ID, the location, what it is. Um, if you're going out, I highly recommend looking at this feature type. Um, sometimes you'll think you're, you're going to a culvert, but if you don't look at this, it might say non-culvert crossing and then you show up and it's a bridge. Um, so that's always one good little thing to check out. You can see if there's fish use potential. So again, if you're in the field and you're like, man, I don't know if this is fish use potential, go back when you get back home after your survey, go back to the previous survey, which is here, and you'll see yes, so you can mark yes. And the fish use criteria would be biological. So they've been seen there. Um, previously, it was marked as not a barrier. That's 100% passable. And then this is a big one, owner type. It'll tell you if your culvert is on private property and privately owned or if it's on like state property or something like that. If it's private property, you guys are not going to be going to it unless I send you guys to it or it's part of one of our private property um, programs that we're working on. So before you go out, if you ever go out to a random culvert, please make sure you check the owner type because um, we don't want you going on private property unless we've talked about it. Your data source, that's going to be the last crew that surveyed it. So WDFW surveyed it last. They surveyed in October of 2012. Um, this is a great culvert to survey. So we want to focus on culverts that were surveyed from 2012 and earlier. Um, every culvert needs to be surveyed about every 10 years. So 2012 is what we shoot for right now. 2012, 2011. Anything that was surveyed before then, free game. Uh, you got your potential species, so that's another thing you have to put on your level A form so you can get it here. Significant reach. And then you got some pictures. Um, as you can see here, this could be a bridge, it could be a culvert. Um, in our case, it's a bridge. Um, well, actually, no, it's technically a culvert um, because they decided that the bank full width um, was outside of the span of the bridge. So it is a culvert. Um, and then the most important thing to really get all your data is the total passage summary report. This is going to be your level A form. So you hit that hyperlink there. And it takes you to this wonderful form with all, here's your site description form here. So you can get a lot of your data that you need on your forms ahead of time or after the fact, just from looking at these. Short, sweet comments. Here's your level A form. When you guys submit your forms to me, I pull these up and I check all of your measurements to see how close they are here. So for example, today I had one and WDFW said the length was 31.1 meters, but the submitted form that I got said the length was 34. Turns out that that was actually 34 yards and converted would be 31.1 meters. But if I we hadn't checked it, we would have submitted the wrong thing. So this is a great way to kind of double check your work. Your span and rise can definitely change, especially if it's a metal culvert and it gets squashed. Um, so that's totally fine if it's different. Um, and things can change like stream depth, etc. But just check to make sure you're not like extremely off. 
And here we have some more photos. And on some of the other forms, they'll actually have habitat surveys as well. So I wanted to show you one more type of uh, form here. So this is going to be the one with the barrier correction. So you'll see here it says one of two. This little arrow here will take you to two of two. So this is your actual original culvert here. But if I go back to one of one, this is your barrier correction. So this is the original survey. Two of two is the original survey they did of the old culvert. And then one of one is going to be your barrier correction. Um, and normally there's not a lot of info with the barrier correction, um, but it does say the culvert was removed and the crossing was abandoned. Um, that happened in 2003. But you can go here to the two of two and get your total passes summary. Um, there's photos and all of that. I don't know what was before there before, but now there's this bridge. Uh, does anyone have any questions about looking at site ID, looking at culverts, looking at site IDs on this map? Nope. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you on this map is your the Swift D layer. The Swift D will show you whether or not um, fish have been um, seen in streams. So you're going to go over to this little nub in here where it says layers. And you are going to go down to fish distribution. And you're going to click the box. And when I hit fish di distribution, you'll see that there are a bunch of purple lines now. The purple lines indicate anywhere where there is fish use potential. Um, so this is one way if you have a culvert that you've never, that's never been surveyed before. Um, and so you can't look back at, at a previous survey to see if there is fish use potential. You can look at this map and be able to determine that. That comes in handy a lot when you're up on Forest Service Road. So along the Middle Fork, we're doing this big project here on the F Forest Road 56. And, you know, in a one mile span between here and here, there was about 20 culverts. None of them, they, they all go up and kind of up this hillside. None of them are on fish, are on a stream or creek that have fish use potential. But when you get to this culvert here, boom, we have a stream. I think it's Granite Creek that goes up here. So there is fish use potential. So I would check the fish use potential, yes. And then I would put mapped for my criteria. There are a couple other things you can do. Um, trying to remember. The query comes in handy. If you're looking for something specific, I think we got a comment here. Peter. Hey, Nick. Yeah, yeah. I, that would be really handy if you knew there was no potential. You would know you're not going to do a level A. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so when, before I went in, out and did some surveys on this 56 road, I looked at this and I'm like, all right, I'm, I know there's going to be at least two culverts in this section here that I will do a level A, but still when you're driving down these roads, remember these maps, they're not always updated. They're not always super specific. Sometimes they're just done by aerial imagery, um, instead of being ground truthed. So you still want to check each culvert because... In this section here, uh, me and my survey partner, we actually found one that did have fish use potential right here, um, and it wasn't mapped. So you, you always got to double check because some maps will show fish use potential, some won't, and it just depends on whether or not that agency went up that stream or not. Um, but this is a great tool to kind of get a general idea of what you'll be looking for in, uh, and to at. So yeah. Great tool to yeah, have. It's, it's the, the 200 meters threshold at 20% gradient. And and figuring that out when there's a bunch of brush and mm -hmm. it can be challenging. So, okay. So we'll still, we'll still use that even though it, it may, so you may think a big stretch of this road has no potential, but, but use the horse sense when you're on site. 
Yep, definitely. Use use both to your advantage and then um, play it by ear once you get to the actual site. So um, don't get complacent when you're out there. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, because the one we had, it was like a seven foot diameter culvert with great gravel in the culvert clearly had been restored um, and was 100% 100 had fish use potential. Um, so the last thing I want to show you is the query option. Um, this is a great way if you're looking for culverts in a specific spot or anything like that. Um, so we are going to do hit the all other searches. So query is right here. We're going to go to all other searches option. Now, if I really wanted to do surveys in Snohomish County, I would hit Snohomish. So I have one selected there. And if I wanted to only look at um, state-owned culverts, um, this is a really nice tool because there's a lot of private, privately owned culverts out there. Um, and it can get kind of annoying having to go through every single one to see if it's a private property. This way you can just filter it out. So. We'll say I want to do state, county, city, and federal. So four owner types, one county. Um, cul uh, feature type, we're going to hit culvert. That'll filter out those non-culvert crossings. And that's, it. that's the basics of what I'll do there. I'll hit apply. And it's going to take me up to here. So all of these red, like they almost look like earthquake spots, um, that's all within Snohomish County. Um, it, so here's the Snohomish County Skagit line, um, and here's the King Snohomish line right here. So these are all the ones that meet my criteria. They're within Snohomish County in their own state, county, city, or federally. And they filter out the privately owned ones. So I can zoom in and click on this one. And hypothetically, if, if we did it right, let's scroll down here, owner type, county, boom. Um, it's a culvert. So everything that we just filtered, it's all there. So it makes it a lot easier to find things. You can also, I believe, um, if you hit these three dots here, you can save to my content, or sorry, you can export to a CSV file. So you can export it to an Excel file. Um, so that way you can actually have like a file that you can go through and you can filter things more. And like if you're looking for something very specific, you can filter things out. So that's a great tool to have. I know a couple of our volunteers do that. Any questions on the WDFW fish passage map? Is that the owner of the culvert or the land that the culvert's located on? It's the owner of the, that's a good question. It's the owner of the land that the culvert's on. Thanks. Not the owner of the culvert itself. So technically, um, if the culvert would have been installed by the owner of the land, so technically it's both, but really what it's referring to is the, the parcel owner, who, who owns that parcel of land. I was just thinking it's a right of way across there that's by the county or the state who would have the access right. to the land. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. Okay, well, if there's no other questions on that, we'll move on to our next thing. We're actually almost done. Get out of there. We have some random WDFW links. This just kind of takes you to their fish passage training and information. Um, most of the stuff that's here is somewhere on our website. And then lastly is the WDFW manual. Um, I need to do some database stuff to figure out why it's not showing on here, but you can download the WDFW manual, but just by clicking this link, um, it might have been updated, which is why it's not showing up below, but um, you would just hit the download, download button and you would get your manual. So the last thing I want to show you guys is some of the other mapping tools. Um, so what we just used on the WDFW map was Swift D. So this guy right here. Um, so that would take you to 
the same map where you saw those purple lines showing where fish use potential is, but it wouldn't show you the culverts. So that's why I like using that layer in the WDFW map um, because it shows you the culverts and it makes it easier for you to find the area, area you're looking for. Some other tools that there are is the WDFW Salmonscape, which I have no clue why they don't use Salmonscape instead of Swift D, but on their fish passage map, but they do. Um, what you do here when you click that, it takes you to the WDFD Salmonscape. You would hit fish, fish distribution. Um, and you have all of these different types of fish that you can choose um, or the streams that the fish would be in there. I normally just hit all Salmonscape species. It's gonna take a minute to load. Quite the mess, but as you zoom in, it gets easier to read. I'm gonna keep going in here. We'll go right down into the Three Forks Natural area. Oh, it's supposed to get easier to read. This is why I don't use it that often. <laughs> um, oh, I guess it's just all species. Okay, so this is similar to what we just looked at. So. I went from layers to the legend, and that'll tell you the difference between the colors. Um, but you can go up here, and it'll show you how far up spe the species that are listed in our list go. Um, so if you're looking for specific ones, you would click it. And there's no Chinook here because of Snoqualmie Falls. But... We can go here and you'll see there's different colors here. So we hit that legend and it'll tell you what, what's there. So documented spawning, documented presence. So we would be looking for the solid blue line. Um, I mean, wherever there's a color, you know, if it's spawning, you can assume that they're, they're present there. So that it's been documented. And this looks like it's up on the white river, I think. So WDFW Salmonscape works. I'm more of a Swift D guy. So we'll exit out of there. And the last one we'll look at is the DNR Forest Practices Application Mapping Tool. Wish they had a short name for it. So when you click it, it's going to come up with this pop-up screen. Just hit accept. And it's really annoying because you can't see anything. All you see is county, so it's really hard to see where you're zooming in on. So you're going to go up to this um, four square base map option. Click that. Pick what you want. I normally do um, terrain with labels. So that way I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to zoom in on here. And let's see. We want to do, oh, where is it? Our type. I'm trying to remember where this one is. I don't use this that much either. And if anyone else knows, you can feel free to chime in. Oh, this is just zooming in. So as you zoom in, we'll zoom in on... Here we go. So once you get closer, you're going to start seeing colors pop up. And you can actually filter out a lot of this other stuff that's really getting in the way. And like the red lines, those are public land surveys. So we'll filter those out. Um, and you see these green lines here. There's red lines over here. What do those mean? Um, that's a great question. If we go over to our legend here and scroll down, we're looking at these wa the water courses right here. Type S and type F are the ones you're primarily looking for. Type S is a shoreline, um, so it's usually some type of waterway that's navigable by a boat, even like a kayak or something like that. And then type F are fish-bearing streams. Um, so you're really looking for these red, red, red lines and the blue lines. Normally the blue lines the fish will get up, and then the red lines are going to be on your creeks and streams. The green lines, those are usually, I believe they're seasonal water courses so seasonal waterways so it might only flow during spring floods 
um, or winter storms, things like that. So the red ones are the ones that are considered type F fish bearing. Any question on that? Okay. All right, with that being said, does anyone have any questions at all about anything I went over, anything bat related, the training or anything like that? Nope. Well, uh, Nick, so I, um, you're going to send an email out if there's a request from DFW for a, an assessment, Is that, and then you're going to just ask who's available. Is that how we think? And then eventually maybe we just start to do this on our own. Is, is that how this would, would go down? Yeah, so um, if I get a request from any agency, normally WDFW is not going to be requesting anything from us because they have their own teams, but we're getting requests by U.S. Forest Service um, from King County, Snohomish County, if I get requests, I'll send it out to the group as an email saying, hey, I need the, the following culverts surveyed by this date. Um, who can go out and do it? Um, and from there, if you can do it, you just reply all saying, I'm willing to do it. Um, once we get kind of a list of people going, we'll create a separate email so we stop reply alling everyone and bombing people's emails. Um, and that group will kind of start figuring out, all right, we're going to go out on this date at this time. Um, we're going to do these culverts and then, you know, three days later, we'll go do the rest of the culverts or something like that. Um, that's the general idea for culvert requests. Um, you'll get them through me um, and get them submitted. Outside of that, if you want to go do your own, your own culvert surveys, you're more than welcome to do them. Um, what we ask, though, is that you just email the group and uh, email the whole group. Um, I've already sent out one email that has all of our volunteers in it. Um, so you can just copy and paste those volunteer emails, send it out. I can also send out a, a, like a contact roster. That way people can do that as well. I'm just saying, and you would say, hey, I'm looking to go out and survey some culverts. Does anyone have any in mind? Or if you have some in mind, you can um, po post those in your email and say, I want to go do these culverts. Who wants to go with me? Um, and if you're new, do not be afraid to just put it out on the group saying, hey, I want to go do some culverts. We have lots of experienced people that are more than happy to go out with you. Um, just as long as you got some in mind or if you're willing to go to some random ones that someone else picks out. Um, and if you want to practice and you just don't know where to go, send me an email and I'll, I'll give you some culverts to go do. There's always some that I can find um, and get you out in the streams. Hey, Nick, did you say we could get a copy of this recording so we could review it? Uh, I, I will post it on YouTube, and I will also post it probably on our uh, page, um, which that's a great question. Um, I need to show you guys our YouTube, so that way you know how to get there as well. But yeah, it'll, it'll be posted. It might take a day or two because it's going to be a lot of data. Um, to. Okay, thanks. Yeah, totally. Okay, so I'm just going to show you one last thing. So we'll do our YouTube. So I'm just going to search YouTube here. And we are going to type in WCTU bat work. Um, so Washington Council Trout Unlimited bat work. Hit enter. And you'll see our friendly little bat logo here. You can click that. That's our channel. And I think the best way to figure out what videos I've posted is go to our playlist. I divide them all up into playlist. So we have webinars. So um, those are random talks that I've done um, and things like that. What is BAT? This is for our private landowners. Um, but if you want to kind of learn a little bit about it, I made a video for that. The how-to's is probably what you'll use the most. So if you go to the how-to's, we have our turning point how-to, how to reserve a bat kit, how to find culverts, how to submit data, how to use the fish use, how to determine fish use potential. 
I go back, we also have our training one. Um, this is where we have, we have four trainings that we've recorded. Um, I didn't record this most recent training just because we have a bunch already and I'm running out of room on my computer. Um, we have the first two that we did with Aaron and Luke, and then our most recent ones um, that have been recorded um, was the full training was by Luke Kelly on April or on, yeah, on April 9th, 2021. Um, and that was for the Olympic Peninsula. So that's, I'd say this is our best one to watch the one hour and 50 minute one because it, um, it's our most recent one. So it has all the most current information and like things that we've learned since we've started the program in it. So yeah, so that's our YouTube page. So you can find all our stuff there. So I'll make sure that this video gets posted there as well. Any other questions? I know we throw a lot at you guys. Um, feel free to always email me. You can call or text me um, as long as it's not like past like 10.30 p.m. I'm usually awake, so... Um, I'm here to help you guys out. That's, that's what I do. So just give me a holler with that. If no one has questions, you guys are all free to enjoy the rest of your night. Hey, thanks, Nick. Thanks, thanks Nick. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Of course. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. I'm so hungry.